Hello students, so this is the next uh, video lecture on uh, atomic absorption spectroscopy and atomic emission spectroscopy. These two uh, spectroscopy techniques, the names are similar, therefore uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, chances to appear in uh, competitive exams, a lot of questions based on the differences and the principles of each of these techniques. So it's important uh, techniques, these two. I just thought I'll explain it using an interactive video as well. So we'll just understand the basic concepts of uh, both atomic absorption, atomic emission, what are the differences, and also some of the modifications of atomic emission spectroscopy in this video lecture. So we all know what spectroscopy is. It is the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. Using that, we try to identify what matter it is so that is how we go about in forensic science. In atomic emission spectroscopy, the scheme is a little uh, complex here, as you can see, uh, but it's easy to understand. So here uh, you have a flame, which is also called as the excitation source. So what happens here, this flame is actually produced by a atomizer, which is the fueling component of this flame. And this atomizer is basically the sample itself that you're going to test. So it is atomized or sprayed into this flame. And also a uh, fuel is also used, which is, a, which is made of inert material. Usually acetylene gas is used to keep the flame alive. So the sample is being atomized and sprayed in this flame, this acetylene flame. What you see here is the light source or emission source, which is usually or always a hollow cathode lamp in AAS. And what is the specialty of this hollow cathode lamp in AAS is the hollow cathode lamp is coated with the sample that you're testing, the target sample that you're looking for. So atomic absorption is not a qualitative test. It's a quantitative test. You need to know what sample, what target analyte you are looking for. So once you know the target analyte, you coat the target analyte on this hollow cathode lamp, on the insides of the hollow cathode lamp, and the uh, cathode uh, and anode uh, which are present inside this uh, light source or radiation source attract part of the sample, the coated sample, towards the canode and part of the sample towards the anode and produces a light of a particular wavelength or a radiation of a particular wavelength which is specific to this particular sample that you are testing. Okay, so the fuel gas is pushed through this. Hydrogen is also pushed through this. It's a mixture of acetylene and hydrogen, which, which is keeping the uh, burner alive. And you are also in putting your sample into this setup where it is being sprayed into this flame and the light, which is specific to the wavelength of absorbance of this sample is being passed into the flame. Now, as this happens, there is absorption that happens, atomic absorption that happens, electromagnetic radiation, which is specific to this particular atom, absorbs the, the electromagnetic radiation that is coming out, and only portions of the other non-absorbed radiation keeps coming out, or atomic emission rays only come out, which are focused using a slit, a monochromator, and then, a, and then finally a detector. So what you see here is the fuel and the sample mixture uh, mechanism, mixing mechanism and the atomizing mechanism where the sample is atomized and thrown into the flame. Hollow cathode lamp is a specialized uh, light electromagnetic radiation source and whatever is emitted is read out in the detector and it's able to identify the concentration of light that is absorbed using that concent that amount of light that is absorbed is able to con calculate the concentration of the sample that you are testing. So it's a quantitative test, highly useful in metal analysis, highly useful in uh, even uh, your uh, alkaloid e examinations, uh, which are performed using AAS, but very commonly used in metal poisoning cases, metal analysis. So atomic uh, absorption spectroscopy parts are these, the hollow cathode lamp, which is the source, the atomizer, which is the sample injecting port, fuel, which is ethylene and oxygen, which is keeping the flame alive. It has a monochromator device to uh, ensure the detector is able to read the emitted atom uh, atomic emission properly, and also a detector part like we usually have. This is about AAS. What about AES? AES, it's almost similar to AAS, other than the hollow cathode lamp that is missing. 
and the hollow cathode lamp that is missing uh, is basically it's cutting off the source of the uh, uh, radiation that we were using for AAS. Instead, it is a flame where the sample are sample is atomized and sprayed, and it burns. The sample is burnt. It splits into its at atoms, and that emission which those atoms give out, just like how you used to do your flame tests in your chemistry lab, you used to take a piece of a little bit of the metal salt on a, a, a holder or a spatula, and you used to burn it in a flame, and the color produced in the flame used to be specific to that particular metal compound, metal salt. So calcium gave brick red and, uh, you know, different things that we studied in our schools. So similarly here, the sample is burnt in a particular flame. There is no specific light source or anything. And the emitted rays are put through a monochromator and a detector finally. And this is able to understand, this is again a quantitative test, a more simpler test. And the results are also quite uh, reliable when you compare AES with AES. Therefore, AES is a more commonly used uh, spectroscopy technique between the two. So in this uh, image, you can see how the atomic absorption and atomic emission are almost the same except for this electromagnetic radiation source part. In other words, they are almost the same. And just the principle or the way in which the test is done only changes a little bit. In other words, AES and AES are almost the same. Now, AES, like I said, is a little more easier to do, a little more cheaper to do, and also reliable. So now we have a little modification of AES, which is called the induction, inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy. Why do we have a modification? It's because the more the heat, the more the uh, excitation that can happen, the better your results become. So you want to generate heat of a great temperature. So a Bunsen burner or a heat source cannot do it. So you need something more uh, advanced to increase the temperature at which it is uh, excited. So we use what is known as an ICP torch. And this ICP torch, inductively coupled plasma torch, produces plasma which is of a great temperature. 10,000 degrees centigrade can be reached uh, in an ICP torch mechanism. And what is this ICP torch? It's basically quartz cylinders or quartz um, canisters which are concentric to each other and placed inside each other and a radio frequency um, generator which is coiled over this ICP torch. So a quartz uh, triple layer uh, canister over which a RF generator is uh, encircling and when a sample is made to burn in such a setup there is plasma which is produced at a very great temperature and at this temperature the atoms excite even better and the readings are even more reliable and more superior than your normal AES. Therefore, this is a much greater advantage when we speak about AES and therefore presently all our uh, laboratories are more and more moving into ICP AES which is a much better sensitive, accurate and also reproducible technique. So this is about AAS and AES, the three major schemes that you need to know. The other uh, topics, of course, we will be covering in your classes. But right now, I hope you understood the different uh, components of AAS, AES, and also a little bit of IE, ICP, AES.